Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I've got another subscriber requested video and this one was requested by Kathy Witter and she asked what's the difference between aquatic, watery and salty notes in perfumery. So I wouldn't say I was an expert at all, I have just done some reading and I'm going to try and just give you the information and let you judge that for yourselves. So I've been reading about aquatic notes in perfumery and there's one aquatic note that really stood out to me as something that was very, very interesting. And really it seemed to me like it had kicked off an entire new genre of perfumes. And I just thought that was fascinating because it was just such a serendipitous, lucky kind of find by just some random chemists working on something totally different. So I think it's important to look at why we enjoy aquatic scents. What is it about aquatic scents that makes us want to wear them? So there's actually a lot of research being done into the beneficial effects of water on human emotions. And water is known to put humans into a blue state of mind. So it makes them feel tranquil, peaceful, calm. It can slow their breathing rate, their heart rate. It has really beneficial effects. For example, you can see that in health statistics with people that live near the coast compared with people who live more inland. You can also see the effects of water, for example, when a, a child's upset and you put them in the bath, they immediately calm down. And that's just, you know, another example of, of how water can really soothe people's emotions. So what notes are actually aquatic in perfumery? Well, there are natural and synthetic notes. And as I've alluded to, the main synthetic note really did kick off the whole aquatic trend. But let me tell you the story of how the main aquatic note, Calone, was first synthesised. Chemists at a company called Camélie, Albert and Lalou were looking at compounds called cyclic ketones. So ketones are compounds that you may have come across, for example, as that kind of smell from pear drops. That's a ketone kind of smell. Or you might know the smell of someone with diabetes who doesn't know they've got diabetes on their breath. You can smell a very sweet smell. That's also a ketone smell. So cyclic ketones was what they were studying and they were actually trying to develop a new type of tranquilizer. They were studying compounds called benzodiazepines. So benzodiazepines are actually now on the market as Valium, one of the biggest selling drugs around the world. But in their search for Valium, the chemists also came across a lot of other interesting compounds and there was one that really stood out because it had a really interesting flavour and aroma profile. And that compound they ended up patenting and they painted it as Calone 1951. So patenting is really important in chemistry because it means that your discovery is protected, that no one else can make it and you can take all of the royalties from its discovery for at least 20 to 30 years, depending upon how long the patent lasts. And these chemists, they, they named it Calone 1951 because the company that they worked for was Camille, Albert and Lalou, so Cal, and then it came from a ketone compound, so the own at the end, and it was 1951, so 1951. So what was the odour profile of Calone? So Calone in solid form, in crystallising form, has a very acrid smell, but when it's dissolved it has a marine scent. It can also give off kind of a watermelon or watery facet to it. So because Calone was under patent, it was expensive and it really wasn't that well used. From the 60s, 70s and even the 80s, trends in perfumery were very much towards a more complex scent profile. It was all very heavy, very powerful scents dominated the market. So roll the clock forward and Calone is suddenly out of patent. In the 90s, there seemed to be more of a minimalist aesthetic coming through. And really that was driven by the free making of, of Calone. So without a patent, any company is free to synthesize the molecule and to use it and sell it. So different companies started making Calone and that meant that Calone was more available for perfumers. And really the first perfume that is recorded as using high amounts of Calone in its composition is New West by Aramis. That fragrance didn't really do that well. So the one that really kicked off the whole trend and we always think of, well, there's, there are two really. One was Davidoff Cool Water for men and the other one was Escape by Calvin Klein. And, you know, both of those scents were, were runaway successes and they are both still made today, although I must say that the Calvin Klein scent has now had the Calone removed. 
really, it also just kicked off with a whole trend in perfumery. It, it was a whole 90s vibe. 90s were all about modernity, cleanliness, you know, simplicity, streamlined, minimalist design with just really brighter, fresher perfumes coming forward and being more popular. And then in 1992, Issey Maki also designed a, an aquatic scent. He said that he wanted to design a scent that smelt of water and his fragrance was called L'eau d'Issey and it was a runaway success. And yet, yeah, just a whole new genre of perfumes were born simply by the use of one molecule that's called calone. There are several other synthetic molecules that have been made as uh, derivations of the calone kind of structure and those are also used in perfumery today. So they can be lighter or heavier and they can also bring out different facets of the fruity or floral scents that accompany the, the overall marine smell. I think the interesting thing about all of these molecules and especially of calone is that calone is incredibly long lasting. It's something that will last on a, on a paper strip for weeks. Something that can really add a lot of depth to a fragrance because it is so long lasting and it is so piercing. I think it is really also really easy to overuse calone in scents and probably that we've got a bit of a calone 90s hangover. So what are the natural notes that we can use to elicit that natural marine scent? Well, perfumers have always used algae and that's kind of interesting because calone itself stimulates the same odour receptors as the scent of algae. And so we, when we smell algae, we smell basically their pheromones. So they give off certain scents to try and attract mates. And that is what we smell. We smell their, their sexy, sexy perfume, basically. So there's algae and then there's also sea fennel. So sea fennel is also known, I think, as samphire, which is eaten in certain countries around the world. I know I've had samphire from the Norfolk coast. It's delicious. So that's used to kind of give a salty freshness to fragrances. And there's also been use of something called blue cypress to elicit a marine note. Also oak moss has been used. So if I wanted a watery fragrance, what would I use? So you can use things like watery fruits. So for example, watermelon or melon or uh, even guava. Also synthetic chemistry have made synthetic melon notes. So there's a molecule, for example, called melonal. I think you can also use flowers to suggest watery notes in perfumery, so lotus or a water lily and freesia. Those three are really watery feeling florals to me. And I think all three can be made synthetically as well, because I know for a fact that lotus is a really hard to extract fragrance note and it does cost a lot of money to make. So I think a lot of those are now made synthetically. So moving away from marine and watery notes, then let's move towards salty notes. So what types of salty notes are there out there? Well, let's think about what different types of salt we have in our lives. So table salt and, and sea salt taste very, very different. And the reason for that, even though both of them do contain sodium chloride and sodium chloride is probably making up at least 97% of both types of salt, it's the impurities in the salt that give it the flavor. And I think the different types of salt as well in perfumery are very distinctive. So I think with salt, it's all about the combination of, of other notes that gives you whether a feeling of whether it's going to be kind of an aquatic feeling salt or whether it's going to be, for example, a gourmand feeling salt. So I think in a way, it's difficult to separate these categories of, of aquatic, of watery and of salty notes because they can all contribute to that feeling of kind of an oceanic fragrance but they also can individually make very different fragrances. So you could have a watery floral fragrance that doesn't have a, like a salty vibe at all. It doesn't remind you of the sea. It might just remind you of being by fresh water, not necessarily a sea fragrance, but equally you could have a marine fragrance and that could be just generally kind of a fresh feeling marine fragrance. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with salt whatsoever. And you can still get that ocean fresh sea spray kind of smell from it. So as you can see, all of these categories are separate, but they, they are kind of linked as well. So it's a very complicated thing to try to dissect. There are, of course, other notes that can give you that marine feeling or the seaside feeling or the aquatic feeling. So there's always that scent memory vibe, isn't there, with, with fragrances. So there could be things that you just associate with the seaside. So you, you might be things that you remember from your times going to the sea as a child. For me, the things that I would think of would be things like driftwood. Also, the smell of sun cream could also sort of give you aquatic vibes. 
and also the smell of certain fruits so for example coconut could give you an aquatic vibe a tropical vibe or maybe even something like the smell of ice cream or the smell of candy floss or even a stick of rock from the seaside so perfumers have a great choice of notes to pick from to try to give that marine aquatic watery vibe so I think the perfumes in my collection that make me think of the sea and of water are probably not fantastic examples of that. I think most of the perfumes in my collection are rather more ozonic, so that's something I've not really touched on this, in this video so far, but to me ozonic is more of a drier smell that is more about a clean air smell, a kind of a smell that makes you think of something from electrical sparking. It makes me think of my dad welding um, is how I would describe an ozonic smell. It's that kind of spark smell. So the fragrance that really makes me feel like a watery facet to it is um, Aqua Allegoria Coconut Fizz. So this one just has, yeah, it's just like that background wateriness in it from the, I think from the freesia. It's it's very refreshing it feels like almost like a tropical drink i would say it's i think the the combination of the bergamot with the freesia and the coconut is just very watery feeling i'm just going to give a few other examples of fragrances that have a watery aquatic vibe to them so the one that i would really love to try is giorgio armani's um, aqua de joie i'm not even sure i'm pronouncing that right but but anyway i'll stick a picture up and then you can you can forgive my bad pronunciation Another one that I'd really love to try is Sailing Day by Maison Margiela uh, Replica line of fragrances. And on the cheaper end of the market, you can always try something like uh, Roberta Cavalli Aqua or um, Davidoff Cool Water Woman. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, then please press the like button and please consider subscribing. And if you want me to do a video on any particular subject, then please just let me know in the comments and I will always try to accommodate your requests. If you've got any suggestions for some great aquatic perfumes for me to try, then please leave them down below. And please let me know what you think. Do you think there's a really clear distinction that I'm missing between aquatic, salty and watery perfume notes? So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!